Yo, 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 check this out. This is Fresh Get Out the China Man with the two live crew. Yo, yo, what's up, y'all? It's me, DMC. What's up, y'all? This is the boy, Master P. Yo, check this out. Chuck the public enemy. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Yellow from the world's most dangerous group. What's up? This is DLC. This your boy, C. This is Jerry Heller, motherfucker. This your boy, DJ Paul K. Oil 365. Young Dizzy Ball. Vice Wong. Yo, this is DJ Reddy Brand. What up, what up, what up? This is Real Rick Ross. You can listen to me on the Murder Master Music Show. This is the show that shows no limits, broadcast nothing but the real Interviews with legendary artists, still got love for the underground feel Rappers with records, we're building edition of rappers that are coming up, get them put on We need to the platform to fight the beat, the show that you need to be on He's a future, yes, for life on the screen and follow up with it, that con For all of your needs, production and mixing the master and grab it, just download the line Check out the archives and touch with the show, study your comments and view it, it's you Everything free to download the stream, oh yeah, we can serve your real review We got the phone with me, we bought our bitch, we represent all them killers on the mic and we should love to all your fans Motherfuckers wanna hate, do your baby keep the focus Bringing nothing but the rhythm, coming come and tune into the dopest I'm a man Hey Rock, I felt a skelter. What it look like, what it look like, what it look like. Yeah, first of all, I want to to, to make a call allowance for Shin Price, the Shin Price for you and uh, his family and all that. Appreciate yeah. it, man. Appreciate it. It's a big, uh, big personality, a big energy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. T- tell us about about your your reason to hip hop. Do you remember the first? Hip hop track or remind you in your mind. Uh, the first hip hop track back in your mind. Um, Maybe. I don't know. I think the like at first, like the first hip hop track that I liked was probably it probably came around the time of like either the Fat Boys mm. or 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 UTFO. Yeah. Mm. I don't know which one came first. Mm. But that was around the era when yeah, I started. Yeah, like, like, Showball and all that. Yeah, Melly Mel. Was, yeah. Uh, but they were a little bit after Melly Mel and, mm-hmm. and, and um, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> yeah, that was the, that was around the time with the human beatboxing shit. Because I, before I knew how to rap, I was a beatbox. I used to know how to beatbox and shit. <laughs> Who gets the idea of the, the name Elta Skelter? I know it was a little controversy, but... Who got the idea of the name? That was Sean P. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was uh, for the Beatles, Helter Skelter? Or I no? mean, Helter Skelter means out of confusion. Like, yeah. if you watch, yeah. you know, when you hear the term used, only person who put a negative connotation on the word was the Charles Manson guy. <laughs> But other than that, that Helter Skelter had a definition before Charles Manson. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it just meant hectic. You know mm. what I mean? confusion like mm. sporadic to a certain to a certain extent it meant ruckus mm. you know what I mean mm. I just never seen the word ruckus used to describe it but ruckus came up with the word mm-hmm. I mean he came up with the name for mm. us for those who don't know Sean P is ruckus Which yeah, rock? there was a little confusion too with Fab Five, yeah. with OGC, all that. <laughs> There's much a lot of controversy. Mm-hmm. I think I think about the same case uh, with the Three Six Mafia, all that, all that when they came. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we were just having fun, man. It was like you know, like yeah. like only people. I mean, people make a big deal out of certain things when you don't. When you know, it's just us, just being regular. We were young. We were early yeah. in our early yeah. 20s and we were just doing whatever we whatever young people do, which is whatever they want. <laughs> you know what I mean, for the most part. <laughs> It started with uh, the album of Smith from Wesson, The Shining. And before did you made uh, some tapes or some some things before? Or? I mean, yeah, I've been recording since I was 14 <laughs> years old. Yeah. I mean, 14, 15 years old. <laughs> But Um, nothing professionally yeah. until about Personal tapes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, until about um, 
I don't know. I did. I mean, I, re- I recorded with Smith and Wesson. Mm-hmm. We recorded the Heads Ain't Ready joint on the New Jersey Drive soundtrack. Yeah, it was crazy. I also crazy recorded on on the Points, which was the Black Panther soundtrack. I, yeah, yeah. Black I stumbled Panther. across that. Ninety five. Yeah. Yeah. So I did all of that. You know what I mean? But I remember. Yeah. yeah. So that was basically that was the only thing that that was just the first time. Those were the first music works that reached the masses for me. Mm-hmm. You know. After you you, <coughs> you dropped Nocturnal and uh, for me it was like a crazy cover and uh, I see uh, the image was a cutaway design and uh, <laughs> at this time the, the, and, and the image was what? <coughs> So it's a cutaway design. I remember it's a <laughs> Wait, ca- oh yeah. yeah. What do you mean when you say cal- cutaway? Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, it was a designer mm-hmm. of your of your cover. Oh yeah. <laughs> you said it was a designer. I was the designer of the cover. Oh really? Yeah. Ah, you was the designer. Yeah, the okay. whole thing. Okay. How comes the idea of uh, of the cover of the old uh, I mean, old uh, because. I mean, till it's, I mean, even till now, I'm a nocturnal person. Like I'm always up at night. Um, at that at that time in life, both of us was me and P, me and Ruck were both. All I was at night, we were out mm. and up and active. So I just came up. Once I came up with the title, like I came up with the title and the idea for the cover almost at the same time. Mm. It was just what I saw. I mean, like, we was nocturnal. We was, you know, us hanging upside down. It's like bats, you know, nocturnal animals. Mm. You got the owl on the back, which is a nocturnal creature. And then, you know, you, uh, on the front, if you look in the, you know, in the trees and, the, you know, the, the trees and the bushes, you see yeah. the members of our... It was, it was really pretty simple. It really wasn't that complicated. Mm-hmm. It was just us as nocturnal creatures. And if you look hard enough, what, what you might not see, but what is always there, is our family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was that simple. Uh, did you make also the, the OGC cover? Mm-hmm. Uh, the OGC, the Storm cover? Did I make that one? Yeah. No, I didn't design I that one. <laughs> that, was, that was them. That who who was, made that one, you know? I don't know. No? I don't know. Because no, uh, there are no, there no credits on. <laughs> mm-hmm. On this one, yes, there are a few uh, at this time uh, crazy cover like that. I think about uh, some, some like uh, Black Moth, uh, like uh, Secrets of the Hidden Top or, or Mystic Stars of 26. Mm-hmm. But there's, there's so many covers, uh, the uh, recognizable cover, especially in Bootcamp Click, in uh, Duck mm-hmm. Down, you got, you got crazy cover like I that. I mean, because we, you know, I mean, we. We we're creative and we appreciated yeah. that. Like we appreciated each other's creativity. We didn't try to dumb it down. I mean, we'll, I mean, and that was that was it was in an era where you didn't try to dumb anything down. You tried to be the best. You try. You yeah. really tried to to get busy with everything yeah. you did. It wasn't like it is now. A lot of times there was more creativity before than now. I think <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I think now people people think that they've ran out of creativity like people think that like I, I ask myself sometimes I ask myself like literally that the other day I was talking to my baby mother mm-hmm. and I was like yo sometimes I, I, I worry if I'm gonna run out of dope shit to say mm-hmm. but I won't I really won't like I really I, I figured it out I really won't I might get older and lose my timing or something like that whatever probably not but i will not run out of dope shit to say and i think the game i think like rappers mcs and and shit like i think they they think that they've run out of dope things to say it's like fuck it let's just say nothing now i don't know maybe i'm i'm i don't know but that could be the case because ain't nobody saying no dope shit question yo um Kebabs or burgers? They're about to make a run. Uh, burgers. Burgers, preferably, but mm-hmm. if not, kebabs is cool. Yeah. No sauce and none of that shit, right? 
I mean, yeah, no sauce or none of that shit. Well, kicker was going to oversee the pro right. program, so. All right. And not no weird sauce. I mean, if they got ketchup yeah. on the burger or some like barbecue sauce. Burger, that's a burger. Yeah, I'm saying, if they, like <laughs> kebab, barbecue sauce or whatever, that's regular MF shit. MF Doom Burger. Mm. <laughs> Doom Burger. <laughs> so, um, uh, what did you say? What did we say? Yeah, I was uh, saying, I don't think, I think oh. people think they, they, they ran out of dope shit. Dude, yeah. They say, like, mm. It's like they can't. They feel like they can't take it no higher, so they're gonna take it down. Hmm. Let's 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 go down. Yeah. And uh, you guys cover us and it's production. So it's production was crazy. Like Baby Paul, Evil Evil G, Mid mm-hmm. Miners, all that was crazy. I like, think like, Soldiers Gone Psycho or, or, mm-hmm. or I had or my fingers. In, uh, I had my fingers in Soldiers Gone Psycho. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, what did yeah, you uh, play some what, of the keys? On what equipment you you work at at this time? What you say? What equipment? What equipment? At that time? Yeah. I don't even remember. I mean, uh, on the AS, I mean, I had an ASRX and I had a yeah. keyboard. I don't even remember what kind of keyboard it was, but like I added the keys on on soldiers. I don't even, what did <laughs> soldiers going psycho? Who was that? Was that Baby Paul? Or was it somebody uh, else? It was, uh, yes, it, it was, was Baby Paul. Right. Yeah. And I just added my keys at the at the last minute and shit. Mm-hmm. Shalik Souls so was crazy. Shalik for Shim yeah, Price. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Shim and, Price, and uh, the Great Unknown. Track. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did the Great Unknown as well. Shalik is family. Like, we've known Shalik since we were kids, way before the music. Mm-hmm. It was the same, the same production as, uh, maybe as the same... More way darker, like the, the storm of OGC, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> they got a, a sound, you got a sound in a dumb down boot conflict. I mean, it's just a vibe. It's yeah. like. It was different from the rest for me. Which one? The storm? From the, no, no, from the rest of, of hip hop at, at okay. this time. Yeah. Right of this time. I mean, I but, that's be, like, but that's because we are something. You know what I mean? Like, we are this whole thing. It wasn't just the raps, it wasn't just the music, it wasn't just the clothes, it wasn't just the slang, it wasn't the place, it wasn't just the vibe, it was all of that. Mm. You know what I mean? It was all one thing. Mm. You know, they were all moving parts of one thing. So, you, of, of course, when you got all of those ingredients in yeah. to make one thing, nothing else is going to be like that thing. Unless you put all those same ingredients in and that's not going to happen. Mm. You know what I mean? Mr. Walt also uh, was good for this. Oh yeah. yeah. Like and the I, like when you think about mm-hmm. like Snoop Dogg's first album or Dr. Dre's mm. The Chronic Snoop's album, all of those albums that like the what was it? The Chronic Yeah, the production, yeah. Snoop, like Mike Dean, like Mike Dean for Buffalo. The fucking yeah. what was it? The above the rims. All of those shits had a certain sound. Like like mm. Dr. Dre gave the West Coast a sound. Like Mike Dean made for the South Central. If you came through him, you had a certain sound. Mm-hmm. And that's because it, that 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 thing was part of the thing, if that makes sense. That whole that sound was just a piece of all of those of you know, was a product of all of that mm-hmm. those other things that that are clumped in together. You're not gonna get it anyplace else. You got Evans uh party shared some part this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the party shed sample uh, in the um, in a track you you some find you, you get a sample of party shed the group oh yeah. and one in which track uh, what is it you said you I think it, it was with us. Uh, the between with Louis Vuitton. You yeah. said Porter's head. You said. Yeah. Oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that was. I, uh, again, I I remember. It's called uh, Proud. He you got a Illuminati rhyme. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Illuminati rhyme way before it's hype now to talk about Illuminati. Mm-hmm. At the, in this track, yeah, I got you got the Illuminati rhyme. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you already understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let, let's talk after the, the '97 about Magnum Force. Mm-hmm. It was um, it, it's always a challenge to 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 make a second album. How it was your mind to to do the second album? We were, um, I love Magnum Force, like, I love Magnum Force so much, but the funny thing is, well, not funny at all, is like, Ruck hated that album. 
is bugged is like I mean and it's because it was more than just the album for both of us you know what I mean we couldn't have been more help to skelter than at that point like we were going through complete opposite we were walk we were standing next to each other in two completely different worlds I mean like in 97 when we were working on Magnum Force I felt like a rapper like when I was when we were working on Nocturnal, I was becoming a rapper. I still felt like I mean I knew how to rap. I was I knew how to rap my ass off, but I felt like I was still becoming a rapper. It wasn't all the way real to me yet. By the time we got to not to Magnum Force, it has set in. Like I really do this. I'm a rapper, motherfucking pretty bitches is stopping me at the red light, talking about I ain't having that, I ain't having that. I'm like, this shit has really happened, right? Like But um I got to I got to feed my family like I got to put a whole lot of my friends on I, I got to give them a shot you know what I'm saying like I, that's why the album was called Magnum Force because our mob was on it you know what I'm saying and the Magnum Force was the side mob it was a little bit it was it was it was it was a little filthier than boot camp click hmm. you know <clears throat> boot camp click was soldiers Magnum Force was more gangish you understand what I'm saying it was it was you know or Whatever, whatever you want to call it, it was more grimy, mm-hmm. right? And but these these was our homies. These was the dudes who, like, I was chosen to be a part of something when it came to boot camp clip. You know what I'm saying? Well, not to say that I was chosen, but you know I was chosen by the universe to be a part of that. And a lot of people that we loved that were close to us weren't a part of that. Mm-hmm. So Magnum Force was our chance. To, to you know to to continue the cycle of pulling up more homies getting them out of the you know the, the impoverished situation we was in so I got to do that for a lot of my dudes you know what I mean I felt like a rapper I had just learned how to drive I had the tr- I had the, the vehicle that I wanted um I learned how to rap better <sighs> like me and Ruck were both better MCs on Magnum Force lyrically and all of these things were going on for me, and I'm loving this shit. But on the other end, this is the year when we were working on that was when Ruck's mom, when Ruck's mother passed away. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, among other things, like he, he, you know, he didn't. One, another one of his good friends went to jail and got, you know, for a long time and shit like that. So. At the very same time, like we were going, like it was completely, it was completely opposite. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Also, you got you got big names on this, on this album. You got Outlaws, Daz Ninja. I mean, Kerat. Outlaws don't even count because those are really after the relationship that that Smith and Wesson and Buckshot built with Tupac. After that, yeah. it was like the Outlaws weren't even guests like they were family like we was out there living at their house type of shit like that like mm-hmm. good dudes till this day like when Sean P passed Young Noble was one of the first people to call me you know what I mean he's one of the first people I spoke to I, I just and, and rest uh, in peace to Fatal Hussein too cause yeah. he was right before Sean mm-hmm. you know what I mean like I was just at I went to Fatal's wake Mm. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. At the time uh, when Smith and Wesson recorded with, with Tupac, did you get in studio at this time with them? Or What, with Tupac really? and them? Yeah. Nah. No? No? They did that shit in California. I was mad at them. I was like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> Son okay. of a bitch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And, uh, <clears throat> after you get... You 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 split a little with Elta Skelter. You got on solo, so you got. Shit, I did a lot with Helter Skelter. I mean, like my first two albums was all Helter Skelter. I mean, I still haven't actually put out a solo album, which mm-hmm. is coming though. Yeah, you yeah. This at the time you split with Duke Down. You go in a solo with a uh, DJ Lethal, and uh, after you came back with Bootcamp. In uh, 2002, for the, for the Duck Down Radio, T- tell us about the about this time when you came back. Well, I never split with Boot Camp Clip. No, not really split, but I your own way, or no, or your own way. Yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, 
Right. Mo. It was. I mean, so yeah, I did that, but it was originally Priority Records before it was DJ Lethal. Mm. Priority Records fucked up the package first. You okay. understand what I'm saying? Like they signed me after Duck Down first, and then they fucked it up and let it go, and DJ Lethal picked it up. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? It wasn't just DJ Lethal. I feel like it's important for the world to know that Brian Turner and Priority Record had a shot first. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? They had a shot first and they dropped the ball. And then DJ Lethal and, and Geffen picked it up. I thought Priority Records helped a lot of people. Well, I thought they, they helped a lot of independent rappers. I forget everyone about Master P who came I mean, with Priority Records. I or, mean, but you, did you see the NWA movie? Yeah, I know. Did, did, did you, did you yeah, see? Yeah, yeah, right. I see, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So that's that. I mean, yeah, they I help you. Me. I mean, I mean, let's 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 not let's not get it twisted. They helped me. They helped Duck, Duck Down was signed to Priority, but when Duck Down wasn't signed to Priority and Just Rock was, they did nothing for me. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm. Okay. After your <clears throat> you made you made a solo album. Tell tell us about your. Your album you made after so I made an album called well the album was originally called Planet Rock yeah ah, yeah, right? yeah that was the album while I was on priority when priority dropped the ball and I was at DJ Lethal's Lethal Dose I switched the album a little bit you know it was, it was a little different it was the same album because we bought the album back from priority but I updated it and, and enhanced it and it was called Rock Man Uncensored Then that deal, then the Lethal's label folded. Like Geffen dropped Lethal's label, and um, yeah. So for for the, for a period of time after that, I just chilled out. Like I wasn't looking for another deal. I, I you know, I had to do a little bit of, little bit of uh, introspection. You know what I'm saying? Trying to, f I had to figure out. You know, I, I needed to investigate. Like. Like why? Like you know what I'm saying? Is it something wrong I'm doing, or is it just you know like do I have the worst luck with labels in the world? With I don't know. So you know I fell back for a little while, and in that period I did. That's when I started doing mixtapes. Mm. You know I did A Wall Soldier, Veterans Day, yeah. mm. and Shell Shocked, and Rocking Out West, and all of that. But, you know all of that happened over over a span of time. I just wasn't gonna put out no album until. I felt like I had my my situation, my label situation right. Mm. So it didn't matter. I was never in a rush. I mean, like if people want to hear music, or if I felt like giving people music, I would give them mixtapes. Yeah. For for the people, when you go solo, they they could have a, an image of the of the voice. For me, you you, you are the voice, one of the voice of the down of boot conflict. Mm -hmm. You got a recognizable balls, uh, like baritone, <laughs> mm -hmm. like, a, and uh, and go solo. The people can can see ah, oh, it's him, really. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, after you came back with the little skelter with uh, the dirt uh, yeah. album, tell us about this album. That's my favorite album lyrically. Really? It's like me and Rupp just keep we just kept getting better. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like that was after he. He became the super MC Sean Price, you know what I mean? And me, you know, I had to just get better to keep up with that. Like I'm like, you can't just, be, you know. And and the funny shit is, before he died, he said that he was like, his his biggest motivation in rap is to make sure he can keep up with me. I'm like, nigga, I'm trying to keep up with your stupid ass. You know what I'm saying? Like we were each other's strongest form of motivation. You know what I mean? So by the time we did Dirt, Ruck had put out two. He had put out two solo albums and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the world had got to hear a lot of him. So I had to make sure that, you know, that my shit was 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 noticeable, standing next to all of that sunlight right there. You know what I'm saying? So we went blazing as far as lyrically <laughs> blazing. We didn't like the cover that much, but the rest of it we loved. And uh, how was uh, <coughs> how was she as a person of of not the rapper how he was himself as a character of uh, his mind so what when we was um doing dirt or no 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 him oh just him I mean like 
I mean, it's pretty. He's a pretty straight shooter. I mean, like what you see for the most part really is what you get. Like, if you look at all, I mean, go look at the footage. Like, you know, he's got tons of, tons of footage online, mm. on YouTube of him being. He was he was legitimately the funniest person a lot of you niggas know. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it was just natural. That was just him. He was funny. All day long, he was one of the smartest people you ever know. Like, it's just, he used to be Google to me. Yeah. Like, he was Google. Like, if I needed to fact check something, I would call him. Until Google came out and the internet blew up. And I remember a few months before he passed, I was like, yo, son, the internet took your job, B. Because, <laughs> I mean, I would call him at all hours of the day. Like, yo, um... What's the la 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 la? And he'd just be like, hey, here's a good one. I called him one night. It was late. He answered the phone. I'm like, oh shit, I didn't even realize it was that late. I'm like, he's like, nah, I'm, he's like, what, what up? I was like, Boondocks, stink meaner. Is it Colonel or General? He's like, Colonel, one. That's it. He didn't care. Like, we, I woke him up out of sleep. He appreciate that I appreciate his expertise on the matter. So he's at that, that was another one of his jobs. Like me, I'm snack coordinator. Like all snacks. Like we could be in Germany somewhere where there's nothing is written in English, mm -hmm. and like Buckshot or well, Buckshot is the second in command snack coordinator. But like Sean P or Steele would get up, he would wake me up out of my sleep mm -hmm. just to help pick out the snacks. Because that's one of my motherfucking, that's one of my special talents. You understand what I'm saying? And no, I don't get mad that they woke me up to help them find good cookies. I appreciate that they appreciate my expertise. <laughs> and it works out fine. Tell us about of, of, uh, Duck Down, Duck Down Records, of, of the creation with, with Druha and also Buckshot. Tell us about <coughs> the creation of this label, Independent, because Uh, it's hard to be independent. I, I mean, I don't know. Like, it wasn't me who did that. I mean, I was a part of it, but I just did my part. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like it's like a coach. It's like a basketball team with a with a coach and an assistant coach. Like, I mean, I understand what they're doing. As a matter of fact, that's a bad that's a bad analogy. What I'm saying is this: I know I did my part. You know what I mean? And I know that they started as a management company. I know that um, I know that the management company became a label with Helter Skelter. Mm, yes. You know, Helter Skelter and OGC were the first group signed to Duck Down Records. You know what I mean? And, you know, it was done off of, you know, hard work, massive talent, and some fucking ingenuity, you know what I'm saying, to, and, and a couple of smart guys, you know what I mean, it was pretty much, those were the ingredients right there. Yeah. I know, huh? I feel you. Yeah. Uh, tell us about your, the, the tapes you made, and uh, I'll think about uh, Shell Shock or Walking Out West. Yeah, Shell Shock was my yeah. shit right there, like I put my foot in that. Rockin' Out, like Shell Shock happened, like both both of those mixtapes actually were recorded during weird times in my life. Like Shell Shock was recorded, like I did that whole shit, like where I, I had a fucking open case floating over my head and all of that shit, like, you know, police was trying to take me to jail and all kind of shit. And then Rockin' Out West was recorded when it was all done. And it was like, Like I was in California chilling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just, it was just, it was just a whole nother vibe for mm -hmm. rocking out west. California is is one of my, but well, L.A. and San Diego, Southern California is my favorite place to visit. Like I go there right now and stay a month if I could take my daughter with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, but yeah, that's my shit, and that's where I was at when I recorded that. So I sound relaxed on rocking out west. I think. On shell, you, on shell shock, I sound like the pain. You know what I mean? Did you connect with San Diego rappers at this time, or was, was rappers, local, well, local rappers, out there? Well, out there, um, yeah. it's on the bay, yeah, San Diego. 
who did I have? I had Raz Cas on there. I had a joint with um a joint with, with 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 corrupt on there, but it wasn't a new joint. It was a joint I had from the DJ Lethal pro- project. You know what I mean? Uh, I think that might have been it. I, I had the the Nate Dogg song on there, Walk Like a G. That song was from the Interscope album. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that may be it. Yeah, I may have had the Brownsville Long Beach on there. Just, just, I may have. I don't even remember. But yeah, for the most part, I didn't, I didn't reach out to nobody and do no new songs with them because it was just my like. I literally recorded "Rockin' Out West" in the in the spare room of my ex girl's house. Okay. You know what I mean? Like chilling. With a glass of lemonade, big foot in the air and shit. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. And uh, you got the Alf Munster album also. It's on uh, uh, 2013. Uh, the Alf Munster, uh, the Munster album. Oh, <coughs> yeah. What are you talking about? The uh, Monster, the yeah. Monster Monday jump offs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Hold on. Let me make sure I know what you're asking me. Oh yes, I thought about that. You want to know about the, because it's I did a lot with the you have the Monster Monday saga, yeah. right? Where I released, it started out where I released a song or freestyle every week for 44 weeks. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. All right. Yes. Those the was 44 weeks. The 30 best of those 44 joints are on two mixtapes. You can find them on my Bandcamp band camp right now, rockingthisbcc.bandcamp.com, right? Um, yeah, but I, I just put, I just released a video off of that saga. Like, it was 44 weeks of music. That was, that's two and a half albums, three albums right there, damn near, that I just gave to people free. You know what I'm saying? But then I started doing... Monster Monday radio show mm-hmm. on Beat Miners Radio. You know what I mean? And that's still running to this day right now. I'm going to miss it this Monday because I'm going to be out here. But Monster Mondays briefly migrated to an event thing. Like we, we would have parties on Monday nights in a big, in a, in, in a, in a disclosed, undisclosed location in, in Manhattan. But now, you know, I, um, I have a web series that that I act in and I help do. I, I got a million jobs on this web, web series. I'm part editor, I'm part actor, I'm part of a lot of things. But it's called Tips, and we release every episode on Monster Monday as well. Mm. You know what I'm saying? See, I might want to check that out because I'm getting my Slim Zell Washington on hard body in there. Like, it's a lot of fun. It's it's it's. It's adult content. It's you know, shit is a little bit rough, but I'm sure if you ain't no bitch ass nigga, you'll like it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> and what's <coughs> what's album or project you you work on now? Um, I'm working on a lot. We're, we're working on um, we're working on the Sean P album. On his next album, this nigga left behind mad music. Okay. Like he may have left behind more music than Tupac. I don't know, but he left a lot. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Like that's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But I'm working on. I may have heard about the album Triple M, the Man, the Myth, the Monster. May or may not have heard, but that's the project I've been working on for all this time, trying to, you know, modifying it and trying to make it perfect because it was set to be my first album. But with the passing of my brother, I need to put out another album first. It's like partner interruption, but this is kind of more important right now. And this album is called Rockness AP. You know what I mean? This is Rockness After Price. You know what I mean? Rap. R-A-P. Rockness. After Price. And 
we going to do that first. And then we're going to roll with the man, the myth, the monster. And then I'm working on an album with Rockweiler. <laughs> but he's slow. And so that, should, that one should come last. I mean, if he sent me 15 bangers tonight, then that should be out before the man, the myth, the monster. But, you know, he, his, his, his process is a process. You understand what I'm saying? And so is mine sometimes. Like, I go through spurts where I'm, write, I'm a writing fucking machine. Then other times where I don't write at all, it'll take me a month to write one verse. Like, it's just, it all depends. So shout out to the homie Rockwell. I can't wait to really, really get in. I mean, he sent me a couple of beats and whatnot. But we working on it. I can't wait to really dig into that right there. As a Shinpei album, when, it, when it's come out, we don't know, really? Nah, we don't know yet, but maybe it's dope time. shit. Okay, I remember uh, it was not an album, it was a cover, Shane Price, Master P. It, uh, I'm not sure... <laughs> mm. You remember, remember this? Which one? <laughs> I see one time a cover got Shane Price and under uh, Master P. Oh yeah, that was that was a mixtape. <laughs> ah, it was a mixtape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, funny. Sean P. Master, yeah. he was the master of all P's. Yes. <laughs> like his third, like his, like his, like his album, Mike Tyson. Right? Evan Zakoma was uh, like Master P. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like his album, Mike Tyson. It's like of all microphones, he's Tyson. You know what I'm saying? If you get uh, three favorite rappers, hmm? one spot. Three favorite rappers, one spot you. Three favorite rappers? Uh, Sean Price is definitely my favorite rapper, and that was before he was, when he was still alive. I told him a long time ago that soon no rapper would be, no rapper would be able to rap better than him. I told him that. As soon as he started, I told him, as soon as you learn how to be the same you, you are in the daytime that you are in your raps, nobody's gonna be able to fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, Sean P. Um, now the whole favorite rapper shit, like, it's real weird because niggas can't rap no more. Like, niggas can't rap no more. And I, I don't have, I honestly don't have a, a, a current list of favorites. I mean, I've had favorites over the years, you know what I'm saying? But, They either don't make no music no more or I can't find it because I'm not searching hard enough or whatever. I don't got time to be searching. Somebody should be doing their job and promoting this shit so I wouldn't have to search for it. But I mean, it is what it is, man. Like, I really don't know. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I don't. What do you think about the, the industry now of hip hop? I think. For the most part, it's a lame stream industry. I mean, I think it's good and bad. I mean, uh, you gotta work, work. I mean, you gotta work. You got opportunity. If you work, if you work really hard and smart, you can get, you can accomplish your goals. If you work hard and smart. Before, it was like it didn't matter how hard or smart you worked. Your success was still determined by somebody else. Whether you know a record label trying to. You know, a, a record label, if the record label believed in you and they pushed the magic button, then you was going to go, whether you were dope or not. You understand what I'm saying? Now it's the opposite of that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you don't even have to be that dope, but if you work really hard and really smart, you can go. You understand what I'm saying? And the record label will then come get on board and try to make a profit off of you. Yeah. I feel you, yeah. It's a lot of labels and all that. Also, it's the radio. Yeah. Who don't, who don't push out the Yeah, but the labels be paying the rate, the radio. You know what I'm saying? So, it's all one thing there. You know, record labels disappear. All of the labels disappear, except three of them. Those are the three that's making money and cooperating. They're running the shit. You know what I mean? If you got three producers of all time. Three what? Producers? Two. Yeah. Um Dre Timberland and the, the Beat Miners. The Beat Miners is more than one, but they won. Mm -hmm. I understand. 
Did you have a last message to say to to the young generation who start to hip hop now? Um, enjoy your youth, but don't be afraid. Don't shit on your age, nigga. You dying to get my age. You understand what I'm saying? I got something you motherfuckers, a lot of you niggas ain't gonna never have. Which is over 40 years on the planet, B. You understand what I'm saying? And 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 just think, when you go to your motherfucking um, because I'm not shitting on the young. There's, I was young. My youth was some of the most time of my life. But I want everybody to understand that your youth ain't gonna last forever. And that's not the end of the world. If you notice, when you look at a flyer, I mean, to all of my peoples in New York, right? You've all seen a flyer, probably probably out here too, I'm not sure. You've all seen a flyer to a party that told you to come grown and sexy. It's never young and stupid. That They, they never say that. You understand what I'm saying? Grown, you, it's grown folks music. Or, or, or this here is for grown folks. All you niggas been trying to do is get grown your whole life. So don't, you know what I'm saying? Appreciate it because it's going to happen. Don't fear it. Don't shun it. And don't disrespect. You do what you want, but just don't, you could disrespect whoever you want. Just remember, karma is the baddest bitch. I remember the art of. Disrespect, disrespect. <laughs> Art of disrespectization. <laughs> yeah, karma is the baddest bitch out here. You understand it's what I'm saying? Adult, yeah, and 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 um, there ain't no caller ID. <laughs> there is no caller ID block for karma. Mm -hmm. So you shit on the youth, your youth will get shitted on. You shit on the elderly, your elder, you you gonna be elderly, whatever. Mm -hmm. But fuck all that though. I'm just saying. I think, I think your youngest must respect the architect. I mean, you don't, you, you don't, you. Don't, I'm not saying you have to do anything, mm -hmm. but just understand, ain't no call ID block on karma, and you're probably gonna be older at some point. So, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. okay. And Sean lives on. Okay. Really, thanks for the interview. Rock, rock up this. Absolutely. Really